My town resides in the countryside of the Midwestern United States. It's not a vast town, nor is it diminutive. Just a basic run-of-the-mill town you'd find dotted across the country. What is unique about my town is that there is sort of an urban legend tied to it. Not many people outside of the current residents know about it, and it's located in an area that isn't very well traveled. On the western edge of my town is a road. That road extends out and away from the town itself. Not a lot of people travel that road as there is a highway much closer and has more avenues with which to traverse. There aren't too many houses down that way either, so it's pretty desolate. There is, however, a specific area on that road, about 10 miles down, where the road dips and enters a tunnel. The tunnel extends maybe a quarter mile before eventually opening back out. Since I've grown up in this town, I've heard many rumors regarding that specific tunnel. Some people have said that during the tunnel's construction, many workers died in freak accidents. Another rumor stated that before all the highways were built, that road was one of the few paths out of the town. They said that during heavy traffic, an accident occurred in there, and many people lost their lives to the fires and smoke that engulfed the confined spaces. Now, these are just some of the rumors I've heard regarding the tunnel. I say they're rumors because I've tried to research these events and there isn't any evidence validating the claims. There is one other rumor I've heard told by many people. It's probably the most notable amongst the residents of the town. It is said that during the 80s, a group of teenagers were hanging out one night, and they drove over to the tunnel. For unknown reasons, they parked their car outside of the tunnel, and all entered on foot. Four out of the five teens that had entered never came out of that tunnel again. The only one who did was the youngest of the group. He was found by the police a few hours later, collapsed in the center of the road. When they questioned him, they said the boy could hardly speak, as if his vocal cords had been shredded from screaming. All they could get out of the boy was a single phrase. There is something in the tunnel. Police spent days combing that entire tunnel from end to end, and hadn't uncovered a single clue as to the whereabouts of the missing teenagers. Eventually, they created missing persons files for each of them, and over time, their files faded. As for the sole survivor of that night, the boy went back home. After about a year, him and his family moved away to a location unknown. Ever since that day, rumors began to circulate throughout the community. Eventually, people began to avoid that tunnel altogether. After doing a bit of fact-finding, I did stumble across some information regarding that event, though it was spotty at best. Apparently, four teenagers had actually disappeared from the town in the 80s, and their car was found outside of the tunnel. The articles made no mention of a fifth teenager, so I just assumed everything after the teenagers disappearing was just people making things up. Last week, I was having a rather in-depth debate about the validity of the urban legend regarding the tunnel with a friend of mine. His name is Travis, and we've been good friends ever since grade school. This debate we have usually happens once a year, right around October. The debate we were having was about if the rumors were actually true or not. As plain as it may sound, that was often the crux of our arguments. Travis was convinced that it had to be haunted, while I, on the other hand, had no factual evidence to prove that. Our argument became more and more heated, much more than it had been in the past. Eventually, we both decided that there was only one way to know for sure and that was to go into the tunnel for ourselves. Travis agreed to pick me up in his truck on Saturday at midnight, and we'd drive out to the tunnel. Reluctantly, I agreed. I didn't really want to waste my time on this endeavor, but there was a small part in the back of my mind that did hold some curiosity. Saturday night arrived, and Travis showed up right on time. 
As I walked towards his truck, I could already hear the 80s metal pouring from his speakers. With a sigh, I peeled open his truck's door and hopped inside. With a nod, Travis put the truck in drive and we began our journey to the tunnel. As we drove further and further away from the main body of the town, streetlights became farther and farther apart. Eventually, only a single streetlight appeared in the distance. As we approached, we saw that the streetlight illuminated the entrance of the tunnel. We looked to one another and Travis turned on the music as we got closer. Pulling off to the side of the road, we parked underneath the streetlight. Like I mentioned before, very few people traveled this road, so we were the only car in the area. The glow from the light above stretched out in a small radius around us. It illuminated the entrance of the tunnel, but not the interior. We both looked to one another once again before Travis turned off his truck, and we both stepped outside. We stood at the entrance of the tunnel, uncertain of what we were actually doing there. Travis suggested that we enter for 15 minutes and if nothing happened, then nothing happened. I nodded to him and we both started walking into the tunnel. Now, I believed nothing would happen at all. After all, I've heard of countless urban legends and horror rituals, and none of them had any credible evidence supporting them. As we walked, the clatter of our shoes on the asphalt echoed off the walls and ceiling around us. The light from the street behind us started to grow fainter and fainter. After a few more minutes of walking, we were utterly encased in darkness. It was then that I started to notice something strange. I was getting a feeling of isolation as I walked. A claustrophobic pressure began to consume me, and I had to stop for a moment. When I did, I noticed that with the halting of my footsteps, all of the sound within the tunnel ceased. A sense of nervousness began to simmer within me as I hadn't made any mention of stopping to Travis. He should have still been walking in the darkness next to me. I should have still been able to hear his footsteps. With a faint whisper, I called out to Travis asking him where he was. No answer. I waited in silence for a few minutes longer. Just as I was about to turn around and make my way towards the exit, I heard a sound coming from farther down the tunnel. It sounded like footsteps, but it was strange. The sounds were very spaced apart. One step would echo, then a minute would pass, then another step. I thought it may have been Travis, but a sinking feeling in my gut disagreed. The sounds were drawing nearer and nearer. I whispered to the darkness once more, asking Travis where he was. Then, a voice responded, one that didn't belong to Travis. It was a ghastly, wheezing voice. It said, I found you. Immediately upon hearing this, I spun around and began sprinting for the exit. I couldn't hear anything else aside from my own ragged breathing and rapid footfalls. It felt like I had been running for hours before a pinpoint of light began to grow in the distance. I could feel desperation growing in my mind as I wanted nothing more than to cross that threshold. The exit was only a few feet away now. I could feel safety within my grasp. That feeling quickly vanished as my eyes began to drift towards the ground. Something had grabbed onto me. My momentum carried me halfway out of the tunnel, but I could feel a firm grasp on my legs. After colliding with the dirt, I looked up and saw Travis pacing back and forth in front of his truck. I called out to him, and when he saw me, a relief washed over his face. As he jogged over to me, however, that look of relief faded, and a look of sheer terror took its place. I rolled over onto my back and could see what caused his reaction. There was now a face peering out of the shadows of the tunnel. The best way I can think of to describe it is like a porcelain mask. Its smooth white skin reflected the light from the street lamp nearby. 
Its eyes were wide, painfully wide as it looked at me on the ground. I truly thought it was a mask at first, until it smiled, the wrinkles in the skin becoming more pronounced as it did so. An enormous Cheshire grin stretched across its entire face. A wall of needle-like teeth filled its mouth. Although the teeth were terrifying in their own right, the eyes were much more scary to me. The extremely wide stare seemed to silently scream, I'm going to hurt you. What felt like multiple hands around my legs began to drag me back into the shadows. I scraped at the dirt around me trying to free myself. Then, at the moment of hopelessness, I felt something grab onto my hand. It was Travis. He pushed against the dirt with his feet and strained to pull me out. It felt like my arm and legs were on the verge of dislocating. With my free hand, I swung at its face. My knuckles made a sickening crack upon impact, yet the face didn't even flinch. I was screaming at this point, both from the pain and the situation. Travis then attempted the same and kicked at the face as hard as he could. When his foot connected, I felt the grip loosen around my legs. Travis pulled hard and I kicked with all my might, and he dragged me out into the light. I stood up clutching my hand in pain as we both watched that face slowly meld back into the darkness of the tunnel. Travis and I both ran to his truck, hopped in and sped out of there. During the drive home, I asked him what had happened in there. He told me that a couple minutes after we entered, he asked me a question, and when I didn't respond, he immediately turned and headed out of there. In hindsight, I should have done the same. Travis and I both agreed that it'd probably be for the best if we didn't talk about that night. However, I wanted to write down what happened in my own words while the memory was still fresh in my mind. There are many urban legends throughout the world. Most of them aren't real at all, just scary stories to tell people. But some, well... Some of those legends become legends for a reason.